hey guys uh, good afternoon sorry for the delay somehow because some reason this display uh, doesn't like my laptop sorry for the delay so i am lalit the mohanty and uh, he's kelap uh, so we work for uh, gluster is packaging uh, in fedora also in storage sig so we're going to talk about little bit of uh, what we are doing till now and what kind of packaging issues we got and also little bit of history about the sig part um centos why centos came with the sig stuff so uh, feel free me to interrupt any have you want uh, to ask questions uh, it's it will be great to you know answer your question and see if that makes sense to all of you so a uh, little bit of history centos which is uh, centos core now um, it used to be a binary clone of rhcl red hat enterprise linux so everything that goes to red hat enterprise linux comes to centos so there is no way you can put a package into a centos so if you want to put a package it has you have to go through fedora then in fedora it goes to rail from rail it will come to centos so it's like huge lot of time and you know may not be feasible to all of us so sig is something which you can uh, modify some packages in centos maybe enhance it uh, maybe more cutting edge stuff Now that makes sense to a lot of things. For example, cluster FS. So cluster FS is a file system. It's a storage. So people don't want to upgrade. If let's say you have set up your storage and you don't want to upgrade your storage in a very often, right? If it's working, you just let it run. So till the time you, it gives you some issue and you go back and upgrade the package or fix something. So you don't want don't want to run it in Fedora. I mean, most people don't want because Fedora has this quick life cycle where in 11 months you have to go to a new version. But CentOS got a Good life cycle of rail, which is like ten years, uh, uh, seven years, I think, uh, seven years or ten years. So, a lot of people in our GlusterFS community uh, uses GlusterFS. They deploy GlusterFS in CentOS. So that's like the deploy storage and it stay there for long, and they can just upgrade whenever we release bug fixes or new releases in GlusterFS. So that's where you know it makes sense for us to. do something in center stick and have our latest cluster fs there so i have written on this stuff like you can enhance and modify center to solve such specific set of uh, issues for example if you have a user story like open stack or maybe cluster maybe safe maybe some other stuff you can actually create a sig in centos and actually put new packages into centos so it's like the whole centos core which is like very stable and on top of it you put couple of packages which you think would be you need more cutting edge stuff okay so uh, the storage thing actually started with cluster fs and safe then uh, this couple of guys joined open fs mb file system open mb file system and hfc genix is the target for linux uh, kernel so we're working on actually all four projects are working on it and you know trying to package it in centos so it helps it will help in many ways for example open open fs is not packaged for uh, rail or centos or fedora it used to be in fedora but now it is not so if you want to consume in rpm based distro or maybe el based distro you don't have packages so this i mean the sig would make sure that you package the rpms are packaged for centos it works fine and you know you can consume it and stuff like that so this is a picture is the the cluster of is is the ant and centos both combined so cluster of is just uh, distributed file system but it has lot of access methods for example you can access cluster of is volumes through smb you can access cluster of is volumes through nfs and also through fuse the other stuff like it is integrated to lot of other uh, ecosystem like um, open stack and uh, to kemu you now you can store images so we have started putting uh, package all packages in a single place so that you don't have to go to any here to get the packages uh, if you go to ipl cluster of is not there you go to rhcl or uh, center score you get cluster of client packages but not the server packages uh, so so but how do how do uh, you know, from community how people can consume all these technologies easily i mean how to get these packages 
and you know have a common forum and all this packages come together and you can access it. So we actually has now in uh, Store S6 is part of GlusterFS. So we have actually packaged Samba and FS Ganesha, CFDB, and uh, we have published the testing packages uh, to Store S6 and uh, looking for community feedback, if it works fine, we're gonna move it to stable repo. So, so how many uh, how many people before the talk knew about Store S6? Hands up, I just wanna know. Oh, hi. <laughs> cool. So um, yeah, it's like we have already gone to testing repos and we're looking for community feedback and once we see how it works out, we'll take it to stable repo and it's like a forum for people, you can join us and see if you think, let's say you need a longer life cycle for a particular package, you can, if you can come together and try to maintain it for a little longer than the community, what community gives us, so you can do that. So there's a lot of freedom, there's no restrictions on us. So I'll hand over to Caleb, we're gonna talk about a little bit about this stuff. that people hear me? Yes, no? My, my colleagues from Seth can hear me, that's. So um, part, of, part of what Lala was uh, uh, trying to allude to is that we have this problem that we've noticed that I'll, I'll use Debian as an example, it's not, not, it's not really a great example, but old versions of Debian are still shipping Gluster 3.2. They go install Debian and then they install Gluster and all of a sudden they've got this really old version of Gluster that doesn't work very well and it's buggy. And then they post on the, the mailing list that, uh, gee, I just installed Debian and nothing works. Because when you install Debian, the first thing you think of is you, ju you just install the packages that Debian ships. And if you install CentOS, maybe you install Etoll and uh, you try and install Gluster and it's not there. And the first thing everybody says is, well, gee, why isn't it there? It's not there because uh, starting in RHEL 6.6, Red Hat actually started shipping uh, pieces of Gluster in RHEL. And FL has, uh, has this rule that says if, there are, if there's anything that's in RHEL, then it can't be in ETEL. So we had to actually take, we had Gluster in ETEL for a long time, and we had to basically re, um, revert or extract it from ETEL and stop shipping it in ETEL. So now we're stuck in this sort of limbo where most people would, you know, would expect to go to ETEL and get Gluster, can't get it. And when it, the reason I brought up Debian as, as an example is that uh, very few people, even though we have bits, we have D packages for, for Debian on download.gluster.org, nobody ever thinks to go look at download.gluster.org for, for Gluster bits. And that's, and that's just as true of CentOS and RHEL. Um, you could go get the, you could go get the, our RPMs from download.gluster.org and install from that and then you would have the latest, best supported uh, packages that we offer but if nobody ever thinks to look there, then that, that really doesn't help us. So what we're really looking for from the storage SIG is to try and promote the storage SIG as the first place that people who are installing CentOS, we want the storage SIG to be the first place that people go to look for the latest packages. Yeah, uh, um, Neil? Well, I didn't get to make that decision. They just said, Psh, no, no, uh, no Gluster FS. Actually, the way the, glus the way Gluster packages are, there's a, there's a common package, and there's a server package, and there's some other packages, and RHEL ships the common package and a couple of the other packages, and we would ship, if what we would have in, in, in EPO would be the common package, so we just really had to yank from the sort of the least common or the greatest common denominator package. 
so sad, unfortunate, but that's, I didn't make the rules and uh, it, it's like, it's like, it's, it's fighting a losing battle to argue with the REL and ETEL, or not the REL, with the uh, Fedora and ETEL packaging committees. And the thing I learned as, a, as, the, as the father of two obstinate children is you, you pick your battles, right? There were other battles I wanted to have with the Fedora packaging committee and I didn't want to burn a bridge on, on Gluster. So anyway, what we really want to do is build up the, the idea of these SIGs as the number, as if not the first, at least the second place that people go to look for software for their CentOS systems. And because we, we already know from experience that we, we can promote it all over the place as much as, as much as possible and still nobody will think of download.gluster.org. So that's, that's the real reason, probably for me anyway, that's, um, sorry, I could not, um, uh, that's the real reason is we want people to, to know where to go to find the latest fix because they won't look at download.gluster.org. Um, so what we've got there today, uh, it's, a, it's about a week old. We finally got the bits up. We have the full full featured release of Community Gluster is in the storage SIG. It, as Lala said, it's in right now. It's in testing. If you're familiar with uh, the Fedora process, every package goes into testing, where it spends anywhere from a few days to a couple weeks. After people have a chance to test it and use it. They'll, they may give it uh, karma. If it gets enough karma, it can be promoted to uh, the, the full release version. And I don't think uh, CentOS has reached the, the point where they're doing karma voting, but after, after it's been in testing for a couple weeks, uh, we hope to promote it to uh, the, the full up release. So as um, as I was saying, we want a seamless experience. We want people to look at look at the SIG. They'll download a single RPM from the SIG, which just populates a, uh, a yum repo file in your Etsy yum repos.d, and then you can that will uh, after you install that, then you can install all the other pieces uh, pretty painlessly with just a yum update or a yum install command. And that's what the, the purpose of the storage SIG is. Uh, and as, as Lala was saying, we're, we're also providing not just Gluster there, but we're providing these uh, dependent packages, Samba, Ganesha. For those of, Ganesha is a fairly new project. It's a, an NFS v4 in user land server. It's going to be the Gluster solution going forward for providing NFS v4. If you've been using Gluster, you know that Gluster provides NFS v3. And uh, so we have uh, these layered applications, or we're using these, these layered applications. Now, so I'm going to jump into some of the, the pitfalls that we ran into. It's a little bit technical. This, this headline of mine is a, is a little bit provocative. It's not entirely true. Uh, because I don't think anybody ever really thought that CentOS was the equivalent of RHEL plus ETEL. Uh, and in fact, uh, one of the first uh, obstacles we ran into is that uh, packages like Samba, Gluster, and Ganesha have dependencies on, on packages that are in ETEL or packages that are in private RHEL channels, uh, but, so, but they're not available. So when we go to CentOS and build in the SIG, we no longer have access to these packages through ETEL. So what that requires us to do, one of the first things that required us to do was to pull yet another set of packages into, into, into the SIG and build them in the SIG. And we'll have a, I think we have a couple, be able to identify a couple examples of what those are. Once we've pulled in those dependent packages and built them, then we can re rebuild our packages Gluster, Samba, Ganesha, and so on. Uh, you would have thought, given the similarity between CentOS and RHEL, that our, uh, that our RPM spec files would just carry over seamlessly. 
we found that actually to not be the case. So there's a little bit of pain involved in doing this. It's, they're not show-stopping problems, but, uh, but they're extra steps that we have to do. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come to that in the next slide, yeah, so. Um, and so we're, we're casting about a little bit, hoping to, to make things better. Someday maybe that we can just write a single RPM spec file that would work everywhere. Okay, okay I'm kidding myself. That won't ever happen, but. Uh, so here's, here's our, one of our, our big examples is that uh, NFS, the, the NFS Ganesha people use CMake. Almost probably, well, I shouldn't say a number because I would, somebody would prove me wrong. AutoConf and AutoMake and LibTools seem to be the dominant uh, configuration tools. And CMake is this little, little sort of niche uh, config tool, and that's what the Ganesha people decided they liked. Well, RHEL has, C, has CMake. It happens to be CMake 2.6. Apple has this package, um, is this a pointer too? Apple has this package CMake 2.8, and the binaries in that are CMake 2.8, and that gives us CMake and, CMake and Apple, and we th Lala was saying that CentOS, you can't put your own packages in, but somehow uh, CentOS has gotten to C uh, CMake version 2.8, so these are, these are kind of a disjoint set. There was really no overlap. So we already had to hack around supporting two different versions of CMake, and we thought we had the problem solved, and then we got to the CentOS SIG and discovered, oh no, our work was not done. We have to hack up our spec file a little bit more, and then we can, then we can build it. So backing up, and then backing up a little bit, Going back to the discussion about, well, Gluster is not in ePEL and other things, but NFS Ganesha is in ePEL, if you, if you go look, if, you're, if you were curious. But if you look at the Ganesha that's in ePEL, it doesn't have our special uh, LibGF API uh, for Sol. This is a, uh, a, um, a shim library that lets Ganesha speak directly to the Gluster servers without having to go through Fuse. So there's a version of Ganesha in ePEL, but it's, it's not the fully featured version that we really want everybody to be using. And this is part of the reason why we're in the SIG, is that in the SIG, we can deliver a version of Gluster and a version of NFS Ganesha that ha that's fully featured and has all the, all the latest and greatest uh, performance uh, enhancements. So in this case, we, we see the, uh, the storage SIG as a big win because we can deploy software that has the features that we want people to be using and testing. Another, another package, the other package, big package that we have in the SIG is, um, is the Samba suite of SIFs uh, for SIFs uh, file systems. Uh, we ran into some of the same problems. Uh, I call it a beast because Samba has a lot of dependencies and a lot of, uh, just has a lot of ripple effects as it extends its fingers into a lot of different places. And getting Samba built in for the SIG was a bit of a challenge. There's, um, a lot of, like I said, a lot of dependencies. Not all of them that are in RHEL are in a channel that most people get. So that, that means they're not in, they're not in CentOS. And this is where we really had to start pulling lots of dependent packages into the, uh, into the storage SIG just in order to be able to build Samba. And um, yeah, there's the beastie. Um, so is this where I switch back to you? Okay. Yeah, so this building Samba was actually, uh, you know, a little uh, difficult for us because Samba was not in Apple, and uh, we are trying to build Samba 4.1, which has some new dependencies, 
which was not in uh, Ipple, yeah, which was not in Ipple. So where to get these RPMs? You like go to upstream to those packages and directly bring these packages to central SIG. It's like I'm not a Samba guy. Now I have like five dependent packages from Sam for Samba in storage SIG, and who gonna maintain it? It's just not about providing packages. What about the security fixes? Or what about the bug fix release from those upstream releases? So it's a bit of a pain. Um, it's like, you know, we need to make it happen and want more people to join in and so that people can maintain these packages and make the whole experience better. So as of now, we have these four, four projects um, participating in the storage SIG. So ClusterFS is the, the in, in the testing repo, and OpenFS people are building it. In the CBS means uh, CentOS build system, which is actually a cozy. Uh, so they they have a little difficult time there because they have to build certain K modes every time we get a new kernel. Safe uh, is uh, so SAST is again uh, SAST is safe in the same uh, uh, I mean same situation where they're trying to. Uh, get access of build system and trying to you know build those uh, RPMs. Um, it's not built it, but it, it's not been done to till now. But would be done uh, very uh, I mean, um, future, uh, like maybe a couple of weeks. We can see RPMs there. So uh, so as of now, in the testing repo is just one location, and uh, when we're gonna put in the stable repo, we're gonna have mirrors so that people can consume it nicely. And um, I can show you uh, some links of central storage SIG and where to get this repos and how can you use this RPMs. Uh, this is the future. Uh, we don't know much about it, but it's like you know what to do about it. For example, we can we can add Nagios uh, monitoring tools to storage SIG if people want to use it. We can have a single location and maybe Libhut, you know. And uh, can it if there is enough users and people want to actually control it, the direction of the SIG. Can it be evolved like a distribution, which would like storage kind of distributions, totally targeted for storage uh, people, community? Um, so yeah, so in future, the plan is to, you know, if we have enough people in storage SIG, maybe we can, the EPL, EL packages uh, in download or maybe we don't, we don't have to build them. You know? And uh, we'll, we'll see how many people are actually using it and We'll take it as a feedback and see how, how we can move forward. And you guys are welcome to comment and you know, we, all the discussion happens in the uh, center's double mailing list. So if you see the mails, you might see mails, pe people from, uh, mails from people about six and storage six specifically. Yeah, so glad to answer any questions you have. Right, right. Uh, I agree with you. So, it's, so that is right. But the other other angle to this story is we want to make the whole user experience better. Right. It's like it's like a user story. So. So yeah, it's something you know. This is something to think about. I mean, if there is a separate SIG which actually builds all this monitoring tool, that's okay. But it's there is nobody to take Nagios or maintain Nagios, and and we need for. A storage to basically, you know, we need monitoring well and storage is well integrated with it. Maybe we can take it. For example, um, Overt. So Overt is something, an example I can give here. So Overt is a GUI management tool. You can actually create cluster volumes there and do stuff with it. But uh, so Overt is in the word SIG because it's it's like it's it's more appropriate there because you know KVM and uh, other virtualization technologies can integrate with Overt. So it's okay. So it's fine. We can consume virtualization SIG for storage SIG also. Yeah. So the monitoring, the monitoring is a kind of part of the where you have you have developers between developing a web system to fix Nagios monitoring and storage SIG. So does Red Hat monitor the upstream first and then send the SIG down to the developer? Storage first, and then storage then, and then, then 
Yeah. <laughs> Any more questions? Right. Docker is in uh, Docker is actually already part of a SIG. I think it's, uh, it's part of Atomic SIGs in CentOS. Container. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah go go ahead. Go no, go ahead. Well, so deploying Webkit and seeing things across the container and there's a different way that you can you can deploy Webkit right, as a client. So we have people that want to install it directly on the same level or on the same machine as their own. And so it's been a concern in the back of my mind for a while that somebody was So st storage, so storage is a community stuff, and uh, a lot of people in community they use uh, BlusterFS community version on CentOS in their production. So it's like a choice for you. So uh, you know, people from community, they if you want to go with a commercial product, that's fine, absolutely fine. Uh, but if you want to stick to the community version, you can stick, and the storage will give you the experience. And obviously, storage is community. Uh, the community decides the direction, so we can put latest versions new versions of Blusterf is there, which again Red Hat has to decide which version of Blaster they want to ship in their products. Okay, so the newest version is always going to be a little bit better than the latest version of Blaster, so it won't go past the Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, the both things are not related at all. Yeah. Yeah. That's right.
yeah yeah completely yeah everything goes to first upstream then yeah if you find something you might want to delete it and then you know it's not there <laughs> yeah it should be 100 yeah Any more questions, guys? Okay, going one, going two, going three. Thanks. Thanks for coming.